Look at this, homemade vanilla latte with whipped cream, although I've been running around getting set up now, so my cream's kind of melted, but never mind, never mind. Cheers. Mmm. Hi and welcome to the vlog. This is Parent XP. I am Tova. So, what shall I do in this vlog? Um, I was going to start talking about how I manage my mental health because this is something that a lot of you have asked me about. And uh, Sarah, I've got my bullet journal here with me to show you a little bit more about uh, how I use it to manage my mental health. Mm. If you are new to this channel, I have a seven-year-old daughter whose name is Eileen and she has quadriplegic cerebral palsy, very complex needs, seizure disorder, she has a feeding tube, she's non-verbal, she's non-mobile, she goes to a special needs school, there's a lot of extra equipment that she needs. And I also have a three-year-old daughter whose name is Alice, very, very funny, and I think actually she's the star of this YouTube channel now. She takes over and vlogs occasionally to everybody's amusement and to my amusement. Maybe I should just maybe I should just call this Alice's channel and let her vlog everything and, and start making lots of money out of it. Um, my name's Tova, as I've said before, and uh, I left my husband last year in the middle of the first lockdown. <laughs> uh, yeah. Adding to the lockdown divorce statistics was that one rather than a lockdown baby. It certainly wasn't gonna be a lockdown baby. Um, the reasons, my reasons for walking out of that marriage are my own reasons. I'm not gonna go into them here. Uh, but uh, I found my own place, I moved out, and we are now navigating our way through co-parenting as separate parents with two young children who have very different but very demanding needs. And uh, a couple of weeks after I moved into my new place, I got the call from work saying that my job was being put at risk of redundancy and went through the redundancy process that ended with me actually losing my job. So managing my mental health last year was quite challenging at times, I have to admit. There was a day I woke up, I woke up a day I must have been sort of late November. Yeah, I woke up one morning late November and I suddenly felt like a fully functioning, energetic human being. And that's when I realized how bad I had been feeling running up to that. I had, obviously when the children were with me, I, you know, I've been a fully functioning human being this whole time, but I've not felt like it. But when the children were with me, of course, you know, I'm getting up and I'm making breakfast and I'm eating and I'm making sure that they are fed and they're looked after and loved and taken outside and... Excuse me. Ooh, there are burps in that coffee. And, uh, you know, all of those kinds of things. Clean clothes, a clean home, hygiene, all of those kinds of things, of course, were happening when the children were here. But on the mornings when I didn't have the kids, I didn't want to get out of bed. And I didn't want to do anything. And when I did get out of bed, everything I did was exhausting and I just went back to have a nap. Most of last year, I did not do any working out. I, I just didn't have the mental space to work out on top of everything else that was going on. Um, and it wasn't until towards the end of the year that I, I got back into it um, and started working out a bit again. And I managed to have a personal training session with my friend Jonathan. I have kept up eating during this whole time but I have lost a lot of weight and I lose weight when I'm stressed and when I'm unhappy. Clearly I have not been feeling great and then I woke up that morning and I suddenly felt like I had my mojo back and I was like oh my god this is actually I have been really bad. So I've been thinking about this whole thing of how do you manage your mental health? How do you keep yourself from falling into a really, really dark black hole of despair? And you know, how, how do you, like when you have kids, you don't really have that luxury. <laughs> At least I don't think you have that luxury. Maybe that's a very, very harsh way of viewing things, but I don't, you know, I, I, I can't fall into a deep pit of depression. I have responsibilities. My children need me 
to be a happy and whole and healthy mom. My managing my mental health have a few main components. Two of them cost money. Just putting that out there, two of them cost money. So I do appreciate that this is not something for everybody. If my finances don't pick up very soon, I'm probably going to have to let these two go. One of them is I have a cleaner. Once a week, a woman comes in and she cleans my house. So that's one thing I don't have to worry about. Having a cleaner, to me, is a huge investment in my mental well-being. It is important to me to live in a clean home. But to be perfectly honest, it takes a lot of time just keeping my home tidy, let alone, you know, vacuuming and mopping and dusting and, and all of those other things that come with it. So she is a, a huge investment in my mental health. The other financial investment into my mental well-being is I go and see an osteopath. So I pay for regular osteopathy treatments. It started, I actually started with this on the private medical insurance that I had through work and um, uh, it was to get help with my hips. I have issues with my hip joints and I have issues with my back. Um, actually I have issues with all of my joints and I've, I've had it for a long time but um, caring for a child like Eileen it puts a lot of extra strain on your body. But um, osteopathy is a very holistic treatment method so you know, I might go in and say, actually, my lower back is twinging a little bit and he finds loads of stuff going on in my neck. Um, but what's really interesting with my osteopath is he manages to release emotions for me. The first time I went to see him after I had separated, I was crying so hard the treatment table was shaking. And all he did was he put his hands at a certain spot on my neck and it just opened the floodgates of emotions and as long as I can keep paying for these treatments I will keep going because I really do think that they are obviously they're doing an enormous good job on my physical health and keeping my body strong and healthy and be able to to lift and manage alien but actually what it is doing to my mental and emotional well-being is um, is fantastic for me that is so worth the investment Things that are free or almost free, or at least doesn't cost a lot, actually it depends on how crazy you go, exercise. Now, I did sign up for the 30-day free trial with Sayord, where Jonathan works, who did that personal training session. So there's going to be a link below, sayord.co.uk, 30-day free trial, and then it's a subscription, rolling subscription style. And I was going to cancel it after my trial because I never have time to do any of the classes when the classes are on. So they have a schedule with trainers and they do classes online. And I was talking to Jonathan and he went, actually we've managed to put the, vid um, put the classes up as videos on demand now. So every live session they film and they put the video up and you can access that when it suits you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. So I've started African dance. Uh, which is brilliant and so much fun and oh my god my hips are killing me so yes I am paying for that so in that way exercise costs money but there's so much you can do with body weight and at home and free videos on YouTube so I just really recommend trying to get into the routine of doing something and then Sarah here it comes my bullet journal Yes, the actual journal cost a bit of money. Yes, I'm going crazy with pens. Okay, I am going crazy with pens, but you just need a notebook and a pen. That's all you need to do bullet journaling. What the heck is bullet journaling? Bullet journaling is a way of organizing your life in a way that suits you rather than prescripted by a ready printed planner. It can be whatever you want. It can be as minimalistic as you want with literally just to-do lists or it can be really artistic or somewhere in between. My bullet journal is two things. It is a tool to keep me organized but it's also a place where I do a lot of creative stuff and just sitting down and spending an hour on lettering out a quote really really beautifully is to me um, just an amazing practice of mindfulness of being in the moment and and is really meditative that page there and that i'm covering up slightly is a year-end reflection 
thing I do at the end of every year and it's really really fascinating to look back to look back on year after year and see what happens but more of how the bullet journal is a tool here you have my setup for the first full week of January which I've made a little bigger than I usually do with a it's called the Dutch door this half page what I want to try and do I have a section here for uh, time blocking because I'm going to be very very busy in January I've got a lot of things that I want to get on with and then more kind of gratitude journaling and, and other notes and thoughts that come up during the day in this section here. Uh, I've put in my uh, weekly menu, so I've got that. And I have a to-do list and I have a ta-da list. I like the idea of a ta-da list because, you know, you plan to do a lot of stuff and then you get on with some other things and then you look back and you go, oh, I didn't get through my to-do list. What on earth have I done this week? But actually you've had so many ta-da's. I'm adding a ta-da list. I've been doing that for a while, I quite like it. So that's how the bullet journal helps keep me focused, it helps keep me organised and it just gives me somewhere to dump my thoughts so they're not in my head. I need to take the thoughts out of my head and put them down somewhere. I have added, for this year, I've added things like uh, a list of stuff to Google and books that I want to read. And then I mentioned that it's also an area where I try to be a bit creative and I try to do beautiful things. So um, here is one of the ones I did. Feel what you need to feel and then let it go. Do not let it consume you. So I really like lettering these quotes. I think partially they become affirmations and I spend so much time on them. To the divine mischievous spark in you. Now, do I have that one in here? Because sometimes they are, uh, shall we say, a little bit more cathartic than affirmation. The best way to a man's heart is through his fourth and fifth rib. You're just going to have to follow me on Instagram to see those kinds of things. Yes, I do. I take huge pleasure in writing swear words, the ruder the better, out in beautiful script. So follow me on Instagram, it's parentxp there as well, and you can see the kinds of spreads I do for my bullet journal. Lots of photos of the girls, lots of day-to-day -day stuff, if you follow me on there. Oh yeah, I hate the word self-care. I really hate the phrase self-care, I think it's so... It becomes a must, it becomes a chore, it doesn't become something that's beneficial. Oh, you have to, you have to do self-care. You can't pull from an empty cup. Great, come and fill my cup up. I can't fill it up myself. Actually, I can now. But when, when I couldn't, when I couldn't recharge my own batteries, when, when I was so, when I was struggling so much with everything that was on my shoulders and somebody said, take time out for yourself. I'm like, seriously, I'm gonna punch you. <clears throat> I didn't, I'm not violent. Mm. Thank you for watching. Uh, as always, if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, find me on the other social media channels and have a lovely, beautiful day.